What is up you guys? I am Missy Renee and in today's video I'm going to talk about my specific person success story. So if manifestation and conscious creation are topics that you are interested in learning more about then definitely do not forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so that way you're notified when I release new videos every week. If you're interested in more resources such as one-on-one -on -one coaching or my new membership group I will have that information linked down in the description box below. So don't forget to check it out. And I've had this video requested a couple of times before and I have touched on my specific person situation in previous videos but I haven't yet told you guys the story. The very long and winding road that is my SP journey. And most of my clients and most of the people that I talk to are dealing with an SP situation in one form or another. So I figured this could be very helpful for a lot of you who might also be dealing with an SP situation to get some inspiration and some helpful information on exactly what I did to manifest my SP back. So for all of these reasons, I figured it is long past time to make a video about my story and tell you guys all about the journey that I went on and how I successfully manifested my SP back. I met my SP at a mutual friend's birthday party. And I will never forget the moment that I first saw him. He was talking to our friend, our mutual friend, and I remember that moment when he took a glance and noticed me for the first time, and it was literally like time just stopped. And just like that, I was head over heels in love. It was one of those sappy and cheesy moments straight out of a romantic comedy. I got a couple drinks in me so I could muster up the courage, get some liquid courage, so to speak, so I can go over and talk to him. Well, he beat me to the punch. <laughs> At one point, he came up and tapped me on the shoulder and said, hey, I really love your shirt. At the time, I was wearing a replacement shirt. It was a punk band back in the 80s, but I digress. And I was kind of floored, actually, because not a lot of people know about the replacements. They're not very mainstream. And I was like, hey, thanks. And so we started talking and it, was just so natural and all of a sudden like all of my nerves and all of the butterflies in my stomach that were there just a moment ago it all kind of just melted away and talking to him just felt so natural and it just came so easily before i knew it we had been talking for well over two hours at the time it felt like five minutes but as the party started to wind down and it was time for me to go because I did have to work early the next morning, I said, hey, it was fantastic meeting you. I hope to see you around sometime. And he responded with, yeah, likewise. Do you mind if I get your number? And it was in that moment that I knew that this was the man that I was going to marry. So I gave him my number. We had a quick hug and I went home. Two days later, he reached out to me. He sent me a message and was like, hey, are you free this upcoming weekend to go and get some coffee? I said, yeah, sure, I'm free on Sunday. So that Sunday came around, we met again, and just like the first time, we talked and talked and talked, and it was just, I could not believe just how amazing and perfect he was. And I could not believe just how well we were meshing and I was just falling for this guy more and more by the minute. And I was trying to keep myself reserved. I was trying to keep myself poised and confident, but on the inside, I was just melting. I was absolutely melting for this guy. We ended up going out again the next week and a few more dates followed. And by the fifth or sixth date, he asked if we could be exclusive and if I would be his girlfriend. Of course, I said yes. I was so smitten over this guy. It was that new love feeling where I was just floating. I was on cloud nine. Everything was just perfect. At that time, I was into the law of attraction. This was before I found Neville Goddard or really got into Neville Goddard, but I was practicing the law of attraction. So needless to say, I was just all the more confident and I just knew that this was meant to be. I knew that I had met him for a reason. I knew I had manifested him because he was perfect. And I've never in my life met anybody like him. 
And the first year that we were dating was absolutely paradise. He truly felt like a gift from God. I was beside myself. I was so happy. All of my friends and family noticed it. They're like, Missy, I have not seen you like this ever. Because I used to be kind of a negative Nancy. I was kind of a, you know, jaded, pessimistic kind of person. But everything about my SP just made all of those qualities go away. And he felt like home is the only way I can really describe it. So things were absolutely paradise and perfect that first year. Sadly, after that, things started to get a little bit rocky. My insecurities and my self-doubts started to rear their ugly heads. And I had a lot of insecurities. And I noticed a trend that I was doing that first year was I kept telling myself that this is too good to be true. He is too good to be true. He is too perfect. I, I just cannot believe that this is real. This can't really be happening. He was gorgeous. He was smart. He was articulate. He was educated. He was funny. He was sweet. He was everything that I wanted in a partner. And before him, my relationships had always been pretty shitty. I had been in abusive relationships physically and mentally. I had been in relationships where the guy cheated on me. You know, so needless to say, it was too good to be true in my mind. And I kept saying that over and over again. This is too good to be true. He's too good for me. And then my insecurities started to get worse. What if he ends up leaving me because he's way too good to be true? What if he finds somebody better than me? Somebody prettier than me? Somebody smarter than me? And, and all of these things started to just swim in my head. And again, at that time, I didn't know about Neville, but I knew just from the law of attraction that we shouldn't be thinking those kinds of thoughts. So I would try to push him away. I, I tried to get it out of my head, but it just kept returning of like, this is too good to be true. This is too good to be true. This is too good to be true. What if he gets sick of me? What if he finds somebody better than me? And those doubts and those nagging thoughts just started to get more and more powerful. And they started to get louder and louder. Because like I said, I've been cheated on, I've been abused, I've been abandoned. And I became more and more fearful that I would experience the same thing with him. And SP is a pretty attractive guy. So naturally other girls found him attractive as well. And these insecurities and this low self-esteem started to manifest into jealousy. I would start getting suspicious and jealous every time he so much as talked to another girl. I started to suspect that he was cheating on me and I would start accusing him constantly. I didn't have the proof, but in my head, there's just no way that a man who's this beautiful isn't cheating on me. That had been my experience in the past. I've been cheated on and I was certain that it would happen again. Because again, I was impressing the belief that this is too good to be true. I started to get more and more paranoid and clingy and desperate as time went on. And naturally, that took a massive hit to our relationship. It put a huge strain on us and we started fighting. And then the fighting turned into constant fighting. It got to a point where we were fighting almost every day. And this went on for about a year until it finally came to a head just a couple weeks before our second year anniversary. And he broke up with me. And I cannot blame him for doing so because again, I was letting all of my old crippling anxiety and insecurity and jealousy and all of those things, I was just letting it get the best of me. I couldn't help it. As a child, I had been abandoned. I had been neglected. I was abused. I did not have a good childhood. And so I was deeply, deeply scarred and I was deeply, deeply broken from a lot of the things that I had experienced growing up and I had not never dealt with it. So it manifested into this ugly monster that ultimately he couldn't take it anymore. And I don't blame him. Needless to say though, I was devastated. I was completely devastated after the breakup. 
for the first month or so afterwards, I withdrew from everything. I spent days and days upon days just crying my eyes out, not leaving my bedroom. I was miserable. To say that I was heartbroken would be a complete understatement. And it stayed that way for about two months. I was just a mess. I was an ugly, crying mess. Until finally one day, I woke up and instead of that feeling of dread and sadness that usually had come over me for those past two months, I woke up with a feeling of anger. But it was a good anger. It was a, no, screw this. I need to get him back. I had to come to Jesus moment. I had to stop the pity party and I had to start getting my shit together. And I told myself, Missy, this isn't like you. You are a mess. You need to get it together and you need to get him back. And so I set out to make my mission to do just that. Now, like I said earlier, I had not found Neville at this point. This was still a couple of years before I found Neville Goddard. So I was a student of the law of attraction. So I made a vision board. I started affirming every day. I started to visualize the two of us back together, everything happy again. I kept affirming that we were back together and that he missed me and that I was the only one for him, all of this. And I just bombarded myself with affirmations over and over and over again. And it was about six months or so of doing this that he reached out to me again. And I was over the moon. I was ecstatic, naturally. I wasn't sure if I was actually going to pull this off. I wasn't 100% certain that this was going to work, but he reached out and asked if we wanted to meet up. And I said, of course. So we met up the next day and he started telling me all of the things that I was affirming. That he missed me, that he couldn't stop thinking about me, he wanted to give it another go. And once again, I was just over the moon. I was so happy. And at first, Things were great. It felt like old times. It felt like when we had just gotten together. It felt like that first year when everything was a dream. But sadly, this did not last. Several weeks in, those insecurities started coming back. Try as I might, I couldn't help but succumb to those jealous and insecure and doubtful thoughts. They just bombarded me over and over again. And as much as I was like, make it stop, it wouldn't stop. So sure enough, after about four months, he left again. And once again, I was completely shattered. Only this time I got angry. I was like, what the fuck am I doing wrong here? What am I doing to deserve this? I don't get it. I fell into yet another depression. I was not eating, I was barely sleeping. I was a total mess, I barely left my room, I stopped socializing, and just sat there and rotted. It's really the best way to describe it, it felt like I was just rotting. And over the period of the next two months after the second breakup, I just spent my days crying and crying and crying. Only this time, instead of getting angry and determined, I kind of felt defeated. I kind of felt like maybe this wasn't meant to be. Maybe he's not the one. You know, maybe we're not a vibrational match or any of that dumb shit. So after doing a lot of soul searching and with a really heavy heart, I decided that maybe it was time to let him go. Fast forward a year later to when I found Neville. <laughs> and this is when things started to take a drastic turn in my life. I started manifesting bigger things and they started coming faster. And I was feeling like I was finally tapping into my potential, that I was finally onto something here. I kept seeing more and more successes pop up and they started getting bigger and bigger. Over that following year, after I found Neville, I had been working on my practice. I had been working on me. I had been working on manifesting for small things and then bigger and bigger things. I started to get more and more confident in the law. Granted, there was still some trial and error as everybody does have some there, but I was getting more and more confident in my ability to manifest. 
I had manifested travel, I manifested money, I manifested wonderful things for my family and my friends. I had done all of these things and finally I was thinking about romance. I was thinking about do I want to manifest a new romantic partner? And you know, through this whole time, I never truly lost my feelings for my SP. Now we had started talking again over that previous year, shortly after I had found Neville, but he was still keeping me at arm's length and he was still kind of hot and cold and he wasn't sure and all of that, but at least we were on speaking terms again. Because I should also say that the second breakup was nasty. It was bad. It was real bad. There was screaming and him telling me that he never wanted to see me again, that he was done with me. He wanted nothing to do with me. And he blocked me from everywhere, all social media platforms. He was done. So even the fact that we had rekindled our friendship, or at least the ability to be on speaking terms, to me was a huge feat. But I took a moment and I thought about it and I was like, what do I really want here? Do I want a new partner? Or do I want my SP who I still was very much in love with? The choice seemed obvious to me. I wanted my SP. I decided that I wanted to manifest him back. And so the process began. I began to imagine us together laughing and happy and hearing him tell me in imagination that he was so happy that we were back together. And I started to feel better. I genuinely started to feel better. And these imaginal acts for me was like escaping this world and going into my own little world where everything was exactly how I wanted it to be. It was amazing. And lo and behold, he started reaching out more. He, we spent up to an hour talking on the phone a couple times a week. That said, he still definitely had his guard up. He still very much had his shield up. And this went on for months. And I was getting frustrated because I'm like, what am I doing wrong here? Until one day it hit me. I was still clinging on to all of the old concepts that I had been carrying. I was still carrying all of that old garbage that sabotaged everything in the first place. I still had all of these old negative concepts around relationships. And to give you guys a better backstory, I mentioned earlier about my childhood and it was dysfunctional. There was a lot of pain and it scarred me. It truly scarred me for a long time. And I never truly dealt with it. I never truly even tried to relinquish it. And I realized when I had that epiphany that I needed to radically change. I couldn't carry any of those old concepts with me into this new state, into the state where SP and I were back together. I needed to completely disown and discard and kill the old man. And this was truly a turning point because it dawned on me that I needed to give myself the love that I so desperately craved from SP. I needed to turn within and I needed to forgive myself. I needed to love myself first and foremost. I needed to release all of these old concepts that I was carrying about love and not for SP. I needed to do it for me. So for the next handful of months, I went all in on me and taking care of myself. And this is where I really started to do the inner work. I meditated every day. I used my imagination and imagined me whole and complete. I imagined that I was like this flowing, beautiful goddess, this beautiful deity. And I know it sounds silly, but it really did help me feel so empowered and beautiful. I went back and revised over 200 events that had happened through the course of my lifetime that I knew carried some kind of impact and some kind of weight, whether it instilled a limiting belief or whether it was traumatic, whatever the case, I combed over my life 
and anything that stood out, anything that really stood out as a big event that had a negative impact on me, I revised it. I started doing some serious inner work, some serious healing. And during those months, I didn't reach out to SP at all because SP was not the focus. I was. Over the course of those months, I flourished. I had never felt so good about myself in my entire life. I felt at peace. I felt loved. I felt beautiful. And this is just focusing on me and giving myself permission to love myself. And for the first time in my life up until that point, I just felt pure love for SP, for myself, and for everybody. I forgave anyone and everyone that had did me harm and did wrong by me. I forgave myself for the dumb shit that I did to other people. And for the first time, I just felt that pure love, that pure, unconditional love. And I started carrying myself differently. People noticed. I had other exes in this time reach out to me and start professing their love to me. Strangers would give me compliments on the street. I felt powerful. And more importantly, I felt complete. I felt whole. So around the fall or winter of 2017, I felt good enough and confident enough to turn my attention back on manifesting my SP. I imagined the same scene every single night where we would be walking down the Santa Monica Pier in Santa Monica, California, and he turned to me in imagination and he grabbed my chin, tilted my chin up to look at him, and he said, I will treasure you forever. And I made that scene as visceral and vivid as I could to the point where I could smell the salt. I could taste it in the air. I could hear the seagulls. I could feel the wind from little kids running past me on the dock. I could literally feel them run by in imagination. I felt the sun. I felt its warmth. I could feel my SP's hand as he tilted my chin up to look at him. It got so vividly real that when I opened my eyes and I was back in my bedroom, it was a jolt. It was a shock because I really felt that I was there. It felt so real, just as real as I am in this room right now. And I did this every day for two weeks. And in that two weeks, I knew, I knew at the bottom of my soul that my SP was coming back. You could not phase me. I had no doubts. I had no second guesses. I knew it was going to happen. And so for that time, I just went about my life. I went about my days and I didn't even think about it. I barely gave it a second thought. And any time that my SP did pop up in my mind, I, it was a feeling of excitement. It was a feeling of, I cannot wait for this to unfold. There was no more anxiety. There was no more doubting. There was no more second guessing. There was no more heartbreak. There was no more sadness or anger or frustration. None. Whenever SP popped up in my mind, it was always met with a feeling of excitement. It was a feeling of giddiness. It was like the night before Christmas when you're laying awake in bed and you're so excited for what's about to happen that you can't even sleep and you are just beside yourself. That is the closest thing that I can think of to describe how I felt during this time. I knew that it was done and it was this calm yet powerful knowing. And so a few days after the new year in 2018, I remember the day vividly. I was on set, we were shooting a commercial, and I was running around like crazy, as people do when they're on set, and I felt my phone go off. I felt a message. Somebody got sent me a message, and I knew in that moment that it was SP. Now, mind you, we hadn't been talking for the last several months, but nonetheless, I knew, I knew that it was SP that just reached out to me. 
<laughs> sure enough, when I went to break that day, when I went to lunch, I checked my phone and lo and behold, it was SP. And it was a short, simple message. Can't stop thinking about you. Can we talk soon? So I messaged him back, yes, I'm at work. I will call you when I get off set. And that night I did call him when I got home and we talked for over two hours. And I remember him saying to me, you know, Missy, over the last couple of weeks, I don't know what has been going on, but I really have this strong feeling that we need to work this out. He's like, I can't stop thinking about you. I love you fiercely. I cannot see myself with anyone else. And I know that things have been difficult in the past, but especially in the last couple of weeks, this feeling has been overbearing and strong. He told me everything that I wanted to hear him say. We apologized for any of the pain that we inflicted on one another. And he just kept saying over and over about how he could not see himself with anyone else. And he asked me point blank, can we give this another shot? And this time we're not gonna fuck it up. So I said, yes, of course. And that was almost three and a half years ago. And things have been incredible ever since. All of the old bickering, all of the old fighting, all of the old jealousy and all of that noise is gone. We get along better than ever. He is truly my best friend. If anything, the love we have for one another has only grown stronger in this time. And in November, 2018, I had to take a business trip to California and he decided to come with. And one day we decided to go down and walk on the Santa Monica Pier. We were walking along. I could smell the salt water. I could taste it in the air. I could hear the seagulls and all the sounds of chatter around us. I could feel as those two kids ran right past us. And then he turned and looked at me. He tilted my head up and he said, that I will treasure you forever. So I wanted to share the story for a number of reasons, but the biggest one being is to never give up. In total, it was three years that SP and I were separated the second time. And for a good part of that, we were not speaking. And the epiphany that I finally had was that I needed to love me. It needed to be about me. The changes that needed to take place needed to take place with me. Whereas before my focus was always on SP, I was obsessed with him. I could not stop thinking about him. I made him my entire world. I had him up on the biggest pedestal and that's not how we go about doing this. Once I started to work on the self-concepts that I was carrying. Once I started to kill off the old man and all of those old ideas and those old beliefs, once I completely and radically changed all of that behavior and all of those thoughts and all of those beliefs and all of those assumptions, it was only then that he came back. So if you are trying to manifest a specific person, first and foremost, don't give up. But secondly, and just as importantly, make sure that you are working on you for the sake of you and no one else. You need to give yourself the love that you so freely give to others and to your SP. You need to love yourself. You need to forgive yourself because we can only manifest what we are, not what we want. Once you do this, once you successfully kill that old man and those old doubts and those old limiting beliefs, you will manifest anything you want up to and including your specific person. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, do not forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you are interested in checking out any of my other resources, I will have the links down below to my one-on-one -on -one coaching, my blog, my social channels, my podcast, and my new membership group. There's a ton of stuff down there, so don't forget to check it out. Also, don't forget to check out these videos over here. Each video is a different topic, but it all pertains in how to manifest the very best life possible.
So until next time, you guys, take care, be well, and never forget that you can manifest anything. Remember that the change has to come from within before you see it without. Happy manifesting, you guys.